of Christ Church is an anointed ministry where we use the word of God to win souls for the kingdom of God. We are fishers of men and our church is uniquely equipped with the largest privately owned aquarium in the world. All of the marine life that you see in our tanks have to go through a time of quarantine. So here is a recap of our previous episode of Quarantine with Pastor Ricky Rush. Sometimes we don't seek God and say, God, what's, what's next for my life? What kind of dreams should I look forward to? And sometimes we are not pressing toward a goal. And so once you're not pressing toward a goal, the person's kind of, you're kind of idle in your, in your idle mode. And, and the person in the idle mode is just running and, 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 and the, the engine is running and, and it's like, <laughs> you always got a lot, a lot of, <laughs> but and you're burning gas, but, but you're not going anywhere. And I'm going to say this to you because I love you and because God loves both of us and all of us. If you don't have a deep desire for something in your life right now, then here's what you can do. Ask God what he desires for you. Now. You're going to have to be open to his answer. And when you find yourself in a place by yourself, don't start whining and complaining and fussing and saying that everybody is not there. You, if you don't know what that is and you ask God, God, what is your desire for me? If God has you isolated, if God has you in quarantine, you got to go back and remember what you're asking for. I guarantee you that God desires more for you than you have already. Thank you, Father, for revealing your word to me today. And now, another episode of Quarantine with Pastor Ricky Rush. For revealing your word to me
is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me, never ever come short of his word. I'll fast and pray, stay in the narrow way, keep my life clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far. And I'll never turn back God is God is God is God is God my all in all. Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Ricky Rush, and we are here live at the Inspiring Body of Christ Church. It's Mother's Day 2020. Wow. Here we are at Mother's Day, and we're in quarantine. First of all, we had this amazing um, shock to our entire culture when we did Easter Sunday, and there was no one in the building on a day that we would celebrate all around the world the resurrection of our Savior. And now here it is Mother's Day. And we have very few mothers in the house. Very limited. Maybe about three or four. But that's enough to represent mothers everywhere. I want to thank God for you and thank God for all of you mothers who are awake right now. All of you who are Waking up this morning to call your mother to say, I'm glad you're alive. I'm glad you're still with me. Oh. Some mothers are convalescing right now. Some mothers are in the hospital. Some are a home away from their children. Some, for the first time in their lives, are experiencing what a lot of people experience, and that's a complete loneliness at this time. But our prayers are that you would continue to gain strength in your faith to know that God knows, God cares, and that we can trust God. We are here live at the Inspiring Body of Christ Church. That's right. We are still in compliance with understanding that right now, even though the city is opening and the world is opening, the church is, has always been open and has never shut down. We are ex experiencing right now some, some differences in that we normally would have a huge fellowship of people around and we could hug and embrace and laugh and high five and praise and shout and of course spit all over each other in Jesus name <laughs> and sometimes not know it but right now we're just uh we're limited in how we can come together but we have come together today and so we want to thank all of our mothers for being mothers and uh, sister Beverly Rush and I would like to on behalf of our sister Rush and I and the entire church say a happy Mother's Day to our mother of the church sister Irma Hall sister Hall we love you You've been a mother that has sustained in our ministry, and you've been here. You and Sister Bernice Thomas, two of the mothers of our church, we, we together collectively and individually as a church would love to thank you for being so steadfast with us. Now, we have this 8 a.m. service. Now, we have a service at 10 a.m., and then we have our 6 p.m. Mother's Day program. Mother's Day program? Yeah, we're going to have Mother's Day program. So you got to come. It's about... Mm, about 35 minutes maybe so today at 6 p.m. we're gonna have a very special Mother's Day it's a virtual Mother's Day program and we've never ever done anything like this and I've never heard of anyone doing something like this but we're gonna do it that's right we're gonna have a chance for all of our members who chose to um, wish their mothers <laughs> a happy Mother's Day in a very unusual way 
we're going to do it. So we want to do it at 6 p.m. so that all mothers can be included wherever you are, mom. If you're in your church services right now, see if your mom's in her service or around some of the family members, some people can come together in their homes. Then at 6, everybody stops and says, okay, now we put aside all of our different denominations and our church affiliations and our different beliefs and unbeliefs. And we're going to focus at iblcchurch.org and we are going to be able to go Facebook Live and, and tune in and say happy Mother's Day to the mothers of IBOC because today we're going to share our mothers with people all over the world. All right. I have a message that God has given me this morning. I want you to pray for me during this message. So we're going to get ready to go into the message. This is episode number 29 of Quarantined. Quarantined means that we have been set aside for God to do some cleansing. And you need to understand this now. There are still some areas in our lives that God is still working on. How is your temperance? Hmm? How's your how's your how's your forgiveness level? How's your maturity working? Have we still not been in quarantine long enough for God to say, look, I want to put you on display, but you're still displaying some of the things that you did before you came to Christ. So I just want you to put yourself in check. I check with my staff. You check with your staff. You check with the people in your family. You check with the people in your community and say, listen, while you're isolated, what if you're still fussing and kind of bossy and kind of arrogant? And you don't know it because you're not talking to people like you used to. You're not around people anymore like you used to be. And so now the slightest thing can cause you to go off. That could be damaging during this moment of quarantine we're to be better when we come out of this we're to be more loving more caring more understanding more sensitive to God and his people now what we're going to do now is offer a prayer Mother's Day prayer from one of our mothers who has grown into an awesome woman of God um, I met this mother when she was probably about 14 or 15 years old she has transformed it God has changed her life she is a powerful woman of God she is a powerful praying mother she's an awesome wife she's um, she's a model around the ministry she is on fire for God and we don't want to put that fire out she's gonna bless us today uh, with a prayer and after her prayer and I'm gonna come with the message from God. You get ready for this because God's got something to say and I'm trying to say, God, why is this message today? Uh, but, but he knows who he's talking to and God knows exactly what he's doing. So I'm going to welcome Sister Symmetrius, Symmetria Moses, uh, Mosby, Mosby uh, who's going to come to us now with a prayer. And we just thank God for Sister Symmetria. She's a grown woman in the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Bless us, Sister Symmetria. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now, first giving you all the honor, glory, and praise. We want to thank you, Lord, for all that you are and all that you do. You are an awesome, glorious God. You reign on heaven and on earth. Father, on this day set aside for mothers, we ask that you do a special touch across this land, across this nation, for each and every mother. I ask you, Lord, to bless them that the work of their hands may not be forgotten in your sight. Father, I ask that you let their example be passed on as a guiding force to their children. And I ask you, Father, that they continue to give them wisdom that can be passed down from generation to generation. Lord, we know today that there are some people that, are, that have lost their mother, whether it be today, whether it be years ago. Father, you promised in your word that you are close to the brokenhearted and that you rescue those crushed in spirit. So, Father, I ask you to be with those people right now who have lost their mother, who are experiencing great sadness and loss. Father, I ask you to please place your loving, comforting arms around them for support. Lord, we thank you. We serve you. We thank you that you answer our prayers. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. We thank you, Father, for all that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Mosby, for that encouraging prayer. And as you know, we are here at the Inspiring Body of Christ Church, unable to have our congregation 
in full number as we normally um, would on Sunday morning. Um, but I again want to thank our technical department, our AV department, and, and all of you who have taken the time to, to focus and listen in on the Word of God this morning. Okay, so now here's how, we, here's how we go. We just have to keep going with where God has us. We're in quarantine episode number 29. And what we mean by 29 is that there were 28 messages ago that God started speaking to us. God spoke to us here at the Inspiring Body of Christ Church before. Before we went into this quarantine episode, before we went into uh, coronavirus mode and 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 stay home and stay safe, God spoke to us sometime and he put us into revival. And as much as we have to understand that we're preaching to the world, I have to, as a pastor and minister of this house, speak to the congregation that God has allowed uh, me to be able to bless and to minister to and to be with for, for 30 years now. And so I want to take the full responsibility of some things that I'm going to say today that God has moved on my heart to say. When God started moving with me on this message today, I started wondering, okay, God, um, and, I, and I've, I'm, I'm not an occasional speaker always. In, in other words, um, I may talk about mothers and it could be Thanksgiving. So we don't necessarily say, because it's Mother's Day, here's a Mother's Day message, but we want mothers to be encouraged by this message because the one thing that mothers are great in always is supplying for their children. I want everybody to hear that. And God being the greatest father that we could ever imagine has instilled within these mothers the ability to take care of their children. And mothers do this in an unusual way, unusual way. I think there's some formula that God put into mothers that told them to be givers. Mothers are just givers. They will give out, but they don't ever give up. Mothers, I've watched you give, just give out everything, but you never give up. And because you never give up, God continues to supply you. Man, we all have memories of our mothers, and we could stay all morning. I could go into some memories of mothers, and, 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 and it would just amaze you of how the memories of our mothers <laughs> have just changed our worlds. You know, when you couldn't play sports and your mother told you you could do good, your mother was the only one in the whole stands that thought you were good. Everybody else knew you were pitiful. But boy, your mom said, that's my baby. She would bring people to your game to watch you sit on the bench. Wasn't that embarrassing? You remember that? And you, you couldn't figure out how to tell your mom, mom, I'm not going to be getting in this game. That's all right, baby. You made the team. And you didn't want to say, mom, I really didn't make the team. This was just the only uniform they had left. But boy, your mom thought you were great. Remember when your mom, you wanted to be in the band and you couldn't play an instrument. You couldn't blow a horn because you kept coughing or whatever your issue was. But your mama made sure that she spent all she had, put you in that band. And boy, the whole band could be marching this way and you're walking around this way. And your mama was bragging about how good you were. I tell that story all the time because there are some parents like that. You miss a word on the spelling bee and your mother want to write the teacher a letter about you missing a word on the spelling bee. And on the letter, your mama wrote some stuff wrong. But <laughs> mama takes care of her babies. Ooh. And remember when your mom tried to shape your fro, those ones that had froze, and she would pack it down, and you would get so frustrated you couldn't do anything about it because we weren't allowed to, to buck our parents in those days, you know, because we would be buck teeth if we did. You could see, knock them out. But boy, those, all those good things. I don't know how many of you have experienced your mom putting like so much Vaseline on your face that, that you never sweat. You couldn't even sweat through all the Vaseline. I don't know. Where did the Vaseline stuff come from? And, and there are some of you in here. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm going to the word of God. I promise in just a minute. But some of you right now are even addicted to Vicks. You are addicted to Vicks salve. That's right. Because you didn't know what cough syrup was. You didn't know what a moxicillin was. We didn't know what a vaccine was. But you knew what a whole scoop of Vicks was. And you, you had to eat it and I don't know what it did but it got rid of whatever was wrong because 
if, if whatever was wrong, you didn't complain anymore. And then they put a Vic Sav on your feet, and then you had greasy sheets. It was just, but it was amazing. And mom has all these tremendous stories, and we just love them. And if you're not laughing right now, that's okay. You had a martyred mom, and y'all didn't do that. Y'all went to the doctor. Ooh. We went to the drugstore and over to Big Mama's house. And Big Mama's house, I don't know, where did Big Mama get all that mercurial chrome and that monkey blood, that red stuff, whenever you cut yourself? They always had that stuff, but nobody ever went and bought it. And if you were really a privileged child in the Lord, you had a chance to experience castor oil. Now, castor oil was just like, it was like the anointing, amen, because it just moved all over you. You were just, you were just, it just took you into a whole different level. But whatever was wrong, it came out. Why? Because, man, those mamas, they always had a magic formula. And I just thank God for some of those great memories, okay? We all started from a seed. And today, God started to move on my heart about teaching on the seed. And I'm going, God, um, that sounds like an, an offering thing. That sounds like a tithing thing. And, and I don't, I'm not sure in my heart of where we're going with this. And God kept putting on my heart, that's exactly what mothers do. They offer. That's exactly what mothers do. They give their all because mothers have the ability to understand that a seed is not the end the seed is the potential and that's what we want to talk about this morning the seed being the potential i'm going to give some notes because i want to make sure that we keep in tune with pastoring the church i am not trying to become the facebook popular pastor i'm not trying to become the instagram hit i'm not trying to become the world's most popular da, 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 da. i have a responsibility to minister to those who are in revival in revival if we do what god said do god will take care of all the other stuff the gospel is to impart. It is not to make you important or popular. So let's stick with the word of God. Let's stick with the gospel. And I want to make sure that we get a word in us now that can keep us going through this. The city is starting to reopen. But is God releasing us yet? Here's something I want you to understand. Only a relationship with God can impart to a person the courage and the determination necessary to obey God when it comes to giving. That's kind of like, that's, that's, that's my side definition of a mother. But that's the potent definition of a person who's expecting God to do something with the rest of your life. Now, if you've ever been here with us before, and if you're a mother that's never visited our church before, and you're online, these uh, notes are going to be here because I want to make sure that we understand completely that when God says for us to do something and we study to show ourselves approved, then we need to have the evidence to speak and back up what we're saying. Only a relationship with God can put into a person, okay, um, can put into a person the courage, I'm going to be able to do that, the courage and determination that's necessary to obey God regarding giving. You, you can't just obey God. You can't just start to give if you don't have a relationship with God. Pastor, yes. If you don't have a relationship with God, anytime you start to give, you're going to regret. Because the opposite of giving, and to some people, is losing. But according to God, giving means gaining. Giving means gaining. When mom gave birth to that baby, she gained something. She had no idea that the birth that she was bringing forth, the one that she was delivering, would be the one delivering her. You have to have a relationship with God to get in there. So today we want to talk about that, that baby before it was seen and that whatever in your life before it was seen. And I want you to stick with me. I'm going to move pretty quickly, but I got to be very potent this morning. Let's talk about the power of a seed. Let's talk about the power of a seed. A seed in this case can be your son, your daughter. The seed can be your career. The seed can be anything. I know you've known some people who were so smart and they seemed to be genius. But then when you look closely at where they live financially, their lives were falling apart. They had smarts. They had intelligence. They were brilliant. But financially, they couldn't make it. Why am I bringing up finances now? Because the truth is most mothers become completely stressed out when they can't provide for their children. What a mother wants to know at the end of her life is, will my baby be all right? What God wants us to know being our father is, is, is my baby all right? That's why he said he would supply all of our need. Now, you're going to have to really focus on this message today because God now is about to impart. He's about to pour something into our lives like we've never imagined it this morning. 
the last time we were here, God explained to us that if you'll just trust me and believe me, and, and I, I, I had a little thing I had up here, and, and, and God said, if, if you get whatever you're going to get in the form of your offerings and something, if you just give God this, God says, I'll give you this to keep. Okay, that was just our example. God said, this, you, don't, you don't get that. Okay, that's not what you make. Okay, this is what you make. That one was never yours. That's your foundation. We call that in church the tide. That's the seed. And God says, from the seed, okay, I'll produce a harvest. You're going to get a whole bunch more blessings on your 90 that God lets you, he, he allows you to have. You spend it any way you want to, on anything you want to. Anytime you want to. But he blesses that a hundredfold. That's his. By the way, God doesn't need a blessing. He's the blesser. A lot of people are looking for investors right now. The best investment you can make is in God. And so, sometimes people can have all things going together and they fall apart. And sometimes we say, how can this be? I mean, she's so smart and he's so brilliant and they seem to have it all together. But, but if you look real close, financially they're falling apart. And this is because apart from God, there really isn't any true wisdom regarding the management of, of our monies or, or there's no real management of the creation of wealth. And without God, a person can see and hear but can't really understand the truth of God's word. And so our faith-based relationship with God helps us to understand that one of the things that God wants us to have is, is the freedom to not have to uh, be in bondage because we have lack. Is this Mother's Day? Absolutely. Stay with me and you'll watch what God is saying this morning. I'm talking about the power of a seed. It's, 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 it's equally true that a relationship with God, as we said before, is extremely important. It's extremely important if a person is going to become a giver because if, if God is not the center of it, we become self, watch this now, self-centered. And we want to constantly receive and we don't understand the giving. One of the tremendous principles of God's word is that everything related to life, everything related to growth, and everything related to multiplication, life, growth, and multiplication okay here we are now we're in the middle of the sermon now everything related to life growth and multiplication it begins at starting and it begins with a seed and if you want to ever see increase in your life you have to start planting seed the power of a seed that's what we're talking about this morning now I'm talking to a bunch of believers right now who already understand this who know this but sometimes when trouble hits, we forget what we know. You see, I can teach you how to swim, or I can tell you how to swim, but you really learn once you're in the water. You can manage it. You can pass the test from it. You can get straight A's on it. But once you're in the water, that's when you learn what it really feels like. And now we're in that water. Man, I did awesome on my driver's ed written test hello somebody some of you know what i'm talking about some of you are old enough to have taken that test at the lancaster key shopping center in oak cliff texas that's right that man came out with that white cap on that hat man he said in that front seat and remember you thought you were such a hot shot driving you turned the radio on put your arm up on the side of the thing the man was like what are you doing see you forgot you got to go 10 and 2 turn the radio off focus on the written test it was great but man, I remember that first real wide left I made. And I, and I, I didn't bring it back quick enough, you know. <laughs> I went so far left, I almost slid over to the man. And I had to remember the, because it felt different once you were behind the wheel versus behind the paper. So see, we can get this stuff down on paper, but right now, saints, we're, we're behind the wheel. We are actually in it. Thank God. What? Thank God. What? Thank God during Corona. What did he, I said, thank God 
during Corona. See, now is where the believers are being thrust forward. If the seed you plant is from God, it's getting ready to multiply. And it's that seed that determines when and where and how much of your harvest is going to come forth. I can always tell people who don't really expect to receive anything, they haven't made room for it. Some people think that because they pray uh, that all their needs are met all the time. And at some point, God's going to feel sorry for you. Here's my answer. Here's the answer to that. No, that's not going to happen. What? No. You need to get used to hearing it. No, that's not how it happens. God moves when you plant. He starts the growth of a harvest when your seed has been planted. And if your seed has not been planted, your harvest is not coming forth. What did you do with the part that God told you to enjoy? Once a seed is in the ground, let's just let's have a refresher real quick this morning. It begins to grow and that crop needs to be watered now. That's why God gave you all this but Now it needs to be watered. It needs to be weeded, what we call weeded out, which is cultivated. Okay? And it needs to be taken care of. Once it's in the ground, it needs to be watered, weeded, taken care of. It, it needs to be cultivated. Once it's in the ground, it needs to be fertilized and watered, weeded, taken care of. So, so you gave this part to God. This is God. God said, now, I want to do something with the, what you have left over. But what you have left over, now you... You got to do something with it. You got to do something with it. You got to do something with it. Some people drink it. Some people smoke it. Some people gamble it. Some people chunk it. Some people bet it. Some people throw it away. Some people will give to others who don't give to God, and you wonder why you don't get paid back. Because if a person robs God, they're going to have no problem robbing you. If a person's not giving to God, they're not going to ever give back to you. So just consider that a gift and don't expect any return on that. That's just gone. And, 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 and every farmer knows this. And I know we're not in farm society anymore. We're not in an agricultural society. But if a farmer just plants a seed and just kind of walks away, then the harvest is going to be poor in quality. And it's going to have a bad, very bad quantity. It probably won't be very much. We have a garden here at the church. And what we do with our garden is we plant our seed. And once we plant it, we have to go out there when it's cold or when it's hot. We grow foods here at IBOC. But we have to, we have to pull out the weeds. We've got to make sure that the bugs are not there. We've got to keep checking on it. And the wise farmer, the wise farmer, what he does is he plants a seed, then cultivates the plant that springs up. Now, what's this have to do with Mother's Day? That's what your mother is always doing with you, always putting you in check. You are 25 years old. Your mother said, have you taken your medicine? Mama, I'm 25. Yeah, but I watched you pass out last year at 24. <laughs> She's always cultivating. She's always fertilizing. She's always watering you. That's what she does because mom knows the power of a seed. Mom knows what you're supposed to be. God knows what you're supposed to have. He's saying, how are you treating your seed? Mom knows if she doesn't keep up with you, you might forget that you, watch this now, you might forget that you belong to somebody. You might not really believe yet that you have potential because you've been operating on flattery and compliments. You can't keep being fine and cute and nice dimples and wavy hair and good hips and nice lips. You're going to have to have some intelligence. You're going to have to have some foresight. You're going to have to have some vision. And mom knows that when all that other stuff wears out, Something called time can mess up your crop. Same is true when it comes to financial seed that we plant in the form of what we call a tithe. We have to water that thing and weed it and fertilize it. And this means, this means that we have to continually add. And that means that we must continually add doses of what? Faith to the seed we've planted. What do you believe in God for today? Have you stopped believing God for something today? Because, well, I said, I prayed for it yesterday, prayed for it last month. Are you adding any faith to it today? This is a great day to add another dose of faith to the seed that you've already 
planted. And we need to root out any temptation that might come as the devil tries to choke out what God says is coming from our lives. There's something coming from you, saint. Satan's trying to choke it out. And we've got to be able to bless with our faith, water with our faith, the thing that God says is going to come forth. And the better we care for the crop, the greater the harvest is going to be. What are you, how are you taking care of your blessing right now? I guess that's all I'm saying. How are you taking care of it right now? The, the more you take care of your crop, the more you weed out the stuff, <clears throat> the better it's going to be. See, because as you start to grow, I'm just going to do this right quick. I, I, I didn't plan any of this, maybe it helps somebody. When you start to grow, see, you grow like this. This is your harvest. All kind of stuff gets in between there. And so that starts to cloud it out. <clears throat> our job, our responsibility is to constantly pick out these things that, 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 that don't make us look healthy. And that might mean picking away some people, picking away some relationships, staying away from some gatherings. See, and, and, and you got to keep doing that because every time you have a harvest, every time you start to grow, th there are things that will just grow in your life. I don't know what kind of shot we get of that, and it's kind of ugly. With that. But, but things start to grow in between. So you got to keep picking it out. That's, that's, that's one of the main reasons that we keep coming and assembling ourselves on Sunday morning. Because you can get used to junk gathering in your life and don't think you need it cleaned out, which is another one of my concerns about going into this, this quarantine and being locked away from people. You don't know how mean you've become. You don't know how snappy you are. <clears throat> I challenge everyone around me, keep testing me. Keep checking on me. You don't know that you've become mean. You don't know that you've got some 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 frowns on your face now. You know, because you're always fishing in a mask. Oh my God, mask can make you hide all of it. You can, boy, I'm telling you now, people put on a mask and 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 all kind of crazy relationships can form because all you see are eyes. You don't see the rest of that person. You walk up to somebody and oh my goodness, she got a whole found out Jenny's was open. Got a hold of some more eyelashes. Got some more blush. Made, got just a piece of the baby hair kit. And now she's looking like, oh my goodness, you looking at it in the store? Are you looking at him in the store? He got those, you know, those eyes, you know, those, those eyes. Sometimes guys have those eyes. Ladies go, ooh, he got eyes like a bunny rabbit, you know, kind of hazel and all that kind of stuff. And all you see is his eyes and he's looking at you. Yeah, and he's looking wonderful. And she's looking great through the eyes. Nowadays, man, you got to take that thing a little further. Don't go, don't fall for that. Take that mask off. Rascal look like they got Tussie Row implants. You just got the boy because you do. What happened in the, and not saying that you don't, you don't base people out their teeth and all, but, but, but a lot, it's a lot more to go with that. I don't, did, I didn't say Tussie Row implants. That was, that didn't have nothing to do with Jesus. I just got into a zone right there. But anyway, God promises us a harvest when? In due season. We are in due season kind of Christians. We are in due season kind of believers. I don't have to look at what someone else is having and going, ooh, that's mine. No, God has promised me. I say, my season is due. That my, It's time for it. There's a time for it. Now, some of us may, let me slow down. Boy, I dare I go up again. I'm on fire. Some of us may have gotten excited about somebody else's harvest and forgot to thank God for yours and when yours came in it wasn't as big as theirs and you forgot to say thank you you forgot to thank God for that little Volkswagen that was just pump, pumping along I had a Volkswagen Beetle you know boom, boom, boom. But, but, but I tell you what I thank God for that Beetle every day it ran out of gas I thank God for the, I thank that God that I had the gas to put in it and God eventually as my due season was coming, see, God had to teach me how to take care of small things. And your due season is coming. And it has been promised in the word of God in Leviticus 26 and 4. Don't forget this now. We're talking about the power of a seed. I'm going into it now. It says, then will I give you rain in its season. The land shall yield its produce and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. God says, I will what? give you rain in due season. New King James Version says that. I will give you rain in 
Do, did you pray for rain? He said, I'll give it to you. Why am I going to give it to you? Because I saw what you did with this. Bam! You sowed your seed. Bam! I'm going to give you rain. You ain't even responsible for the rain that's going to come. That's God's job. And see, the problem is when God's raining on some, others are getting upset and jealous, but you have not sown anything. Rain's still going to come, but it's not so because you, you haven't given to him. You haven't given to him. You haven't given to him. You haven't. Faith, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us, Galatians 6, 9, don't get weary in doing well or in due season because your due season is going to come. We get, we get so tired of doing, ooh, I'm, I'm tired of being the only one that seems to be given. I'm tired of being the only one forgiven. I'm tired of being the only one that's apologizing. I'm tired of being, the Bible said, don't get tired of that. He gives us a warning because God knows what it's like to break down. You gave and now things are coming, but you cannot get weary in well-doing. For here it comes again, in due season, it's going to rain. And you got so frustrated and so irritated because God says there are some guidelines that go along with being blessed to show that you're on my side. You can't. You, I'm tired. I'm walking away. Wow. Let's talk about what faith is for a second. Let's talk about what it is when you give to God. Let's talk about what happens with the power of a seed. See, faith is what we hold on to. Why we're waiting for God to send the increase. God, I don't have any, don't have any groceries in the house. God said, hold on to your faith. Groceries are coming. You got enough weight on you to wait two more months anyway. You ain't going to starve to death. You just going to be hungry. But just hold on a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a Hold on to your faith. God, God, I need a car. I need a car by Tuesday. You'll get, a, you'll get a bus pass by Tuesday. You'll get a car in your due season. Hold on to your faith. Uh, but, but God, I, 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 I need a job by next Wednesday. God said, you, you'll get some money by next Wednesday. But you don't have, you don't have the, the temperance for a job right now. You hold on to your faith. Because if you believe that I can feed you today, you know I'll provide for you tomorrow. Now, maybe you've been in conversations with people who didn't have faith. They just told you how much they worked. Faith is what you hold on to. I hope this is blessing you. It's what you hold on to while you're waiting for God to send the increase. Okay, remember, you give him this. He's going to send a He's going to send a whole bunch of this. He, see, God is going to overload you. Nonsense. Just stuff you. That's why you look in your house right now. You can throw stuff away. You just got stuff now that's like, man, what am I going to do with all this? Faith is what you hold on to while you're waiting on this increase. I think we're getting it. Faith is what we do while we're waiting for God to grow the seed. Faith is what we do while we're waiting on him to grow that seed. Now, it's what you hold on to while we're waiting on God to send the increase. But faith is what we do while we're waiting on God to grow that seed. It's what you hold on to, and faith is what you do. Faith is what you hold on to, it's what you do. I'm talking about the power of a seed. <clears throat> you are somebody's seed that grew up. You're no longer inside your mom. You're now in a troubled world, and you got to hold on to the same God that your mom believed. You got to do the same faith that your mom used when she could not provide for you, and others said that she would be a bad mom and she would fail. There's always a waiting time, y'all, between, between the, the, the time a seed is planted and the harvest that it produces. 
Seed and harvest, those are those words again. Seeds are how it starts out small. Harvest is what it looks like when it's big. Seed, small, harvest, big. We just had a prayer by a young lady here. I met her in seed form. She was always an evangelist, powerful, strong woman of God. But there was a season in between there when she looked like everything in the world was going to go wrong with her life. But she went from seed to harvest. I cannot tell you how many times we laid hands on her in Jesus' name. I can't tell you how many times we prayed for her. But in seed form, at, even as a baby, God knew he had plans for her. And Satan's job is to come in between so that you'll never become that flourishing woman of God. There's a time between that. Now, once you flourish, now you got to remember, there has to be some maintenance now. Because you can grow up and be a woman of God and go, oh, I'm ready to go. God said, oh, ho, 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 ho. Now you're the woman of God. Now there are some more junk that's going to come with you at this stage. See, there's a whole lot more. Re remember the plucking that got you here? Don't get so prideful that you don't think that you need to be plucked out some more. She has a whole nother level. There's a whole lot of other different grasses and weeds. And maybe in between the, for the next service, I may show a better example that with some weeds and some grass or something. So you can just see how you still have beautiful bottles of water there. But how, what's that other junk around it? You're still a beautiful person, but that, what other junk has come up in your life? Is this blessing anybody? I pray that it's blessing you right now. I pray that it's blessing you right now. The, the, the tithing is not like some ATM machine. Now, I'm going to talk about tithing for a second, uh, that, that you put your card into and just pull out some money. It's not like that. Tithe, real simple, real simple. Tithing is planting. Why are we talking about the power of a seed or mother's seed? Plant? Because that's what mamas do. They plant. They plant. And then they harvest, they farm, they work. Don't you talk to me about what your mama didn't do. You don't know what your mama was doing just to provide for you. My mother never showed me this. My mama never. You don't look like it. Whatever your mother was doing, she did the best she could with what she had, with the knowledge that she had. No, she didn't have a car. No, she didn't have an apartment. No, she didn't get a house. No, she didn't have good credit, but she had enough of you to make her stick with it. And look at how you turned out. You've been harvested, and you ought to thank God for that. Your mother tithe. Oh, I don't care who you are. She gave something. Maybe she didn't have a job with, with uh, recurring gifts like we had, but I guarantee she had, or your grandmother had. One of them had a coin purse that they kept in their bosom. And I won't talk to you about bosom because those of you at 8 o'clock service, you know what bosom is. And she would go to that church and pull that bosom out and pinch them little coins and pull that stuff out and put that money in that church house. It was still a seed it was planting. She was planting. She was planting. And God promised her through his word that if you will give, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And I will make sure that the devil does not destroy the fruit of your ground. And that's why you are here. Here, as a fruit of your mother's ground you're her baby no 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 she won't go as far as you got but you would not be where you are has she not planted I don't care about the mistakes she made I don't care if she even gave you up she kept you here long enough to be given up you have a mother Some people say all the time, I hear it all the time, my tithe is so small, it can't make a difference in that church. Church would never know if I don't tithe. Well, okay, that might be true. Because we don't go around checking for tithers around here. The church may not know it, but I guarantee you, God will. I guarantee you, God will. God will know if you don't. And your tithe may be small. Let's just say, you know, I don't have much, Pastor. But in God's hand, it's the beginning of a miracle harvest. If you give and you say, well, I know some people that give $5,000. Pastor came the other day and said one of his loyal members came up when the COVID-19 hit and said, Pastor, I know times are going to hit. And he told me that guy put $30,000 in his hand and said, I know the church is going to be tough. It's going to be a hard time for the church. And here's $30,000. Amen. And, and I said, did, did that man tell you that he did, didn't he hear God say, I bought? You got to keep listening to God. <laughs> okay. 
But anyway, God laid on that man thirty thousand dollars. Well, I've never had a member to come up to me uh, until until today. I know God's moving on somebody now. But no, I've never had somebody come up to me. But 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 thirty thousand. That was what he gave. Let me tell you something. Your tithe might be small in your hand, but in God's hand, it's the beginning of a great harvest. Don't discount what God counts. Don't get discount what God counts. God counts your tithe. Don't discount that. Huge trees come from small seeds. Have you ever seen a mustard seed tree? You can't even keep a mustard seed in your hand. It's so small. It looks like a mold. But boy, when you see a mustard seed tree, okay, okay, okay. Now look at you. Look at you. Think of the, the think of the, there was a guy who used to wrestle. His name was Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant was bigger than Goliath. Andre the Giant was a big old huge man. But you know what? Andre the Giant came from a seed. That's right. You think of the richest person you know, the most wealthy people you know in the world. They came from a seed. God's word is filled with stories about people who gave little seeds and got big harvests. Little seeds and got big harvests. One of my favorite stories is, is, is given... It's a story about giving and receiving. It's a, it's a story of a lady and her son in a place called Zarephath. There was a guy by the name of Elijah. He was a prophet, and God showed Elijah. He was a prophet that had to tell the people that it will not rain or send dew until God speaks to me. And so he had spoke to the people, and there was a drought, a complete drought. And God went to Elijah and told Elijah, I want you to move now. I want you, Elijah, to move now into a wilderness place because there's a drought, and I'm going to take care of you while you're there. Watch this now. Um, there was a drought. There was a drought. There was a drought. There was a famine. Okay, I'm not talking about no tissue. I'm talking about no water, no food. And so God sent him into a wilderness. And God said to him, I'm going to send you there. And there's going to be a brook at the place of Cherith. Okay, there's going to be a brook there. And water will be provided in the brook. And, and then watch what God said. And the raven's going to bring you food. There's going to be a brook with water. And the raven's going to bring you food. Now, I know you, you're looking like, uh, look, if the raven come, Lord, as hungry as I am, I'm going to cook that bird. <laughs> God didn't say cook the bird. He said the bird would bring you food. And see, that's what's wrong with a lot of us. We eat our harvest. We eat our seed. God, don't eat the bird. The bird's going to bring you food. Don't eat your offering. That's going to bring you food. Don't, don't go eat your offering. I, I'm going gambling. I'm going partying. I'm going skating. Don't. That's, what, that's your offering. That's, that's part's going to be blessed. Ooh, let me slow down again. So he told him, the, 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 the brook's going to have enough water for you. Now watch this. And the raven's going to bring you bread. Can you imagine looking up? God, every day blessing you to look up at a downtime. I, I could preach a message right there for about 45 more minutes. How to look up in a downtime. You're looking down for the water, looking up for the food. Just waking up every morning. I don't see any birds. But God's got you looking. Here comes the bird. Ah! He looking like, boy, sure would be good to have a thigh and a wing right now. But I just got to settle for the bread. <laughs> and somebody just settle for what God gives you. <laughs> so anyway, eventually the brook dried up. And when the brook dried up, and here's the point of the story, the whole bird thing was, I just thought that was kind of fun. Happy Mother's Day. So the brook dried up. And then God came back into Elijah and spoke again. Now listen, I, I want us to keep listening to God. If God says, okay, the door is open. Now God's going to say, just stand there. Just because the door is open, don't walk across the street. Don't go out in the yard. Don't go and think it's over. No, listen to God the entire time through. I'm going to say some things in a minute that's going to trouble us a little bit, but I want you to hear God through it. Now, he, 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 he said, now, now, God, you have provided water and, and bread. Hallelujah. Ha. God said, hey, it's not over because the brook dries up now. The reason a lot of us find ourselves in, in trouble is because the blessing got good and, and, and we stopped listening to God. Oh, I don't have to go to church now. I already know that message. Really? Your book's about to dry up. There's a part two. Oh, I heard that sermon. I, I tithe sometimes. Really? But are you giving now? There's a part two. Do you understand why? There's a part two. So now God says to him, now Elijah, here's what I'm going to tell you next. And that's the kind of pastor I like to be, one that continues to listen to God. 
He said in 1 Kings 17 and 9, he said, I want you to, I have commanded a widow to sustain you in a place called Zarephath. I want you to go to Zarephath because I've, I've, I've commanded a, a widow to sustain you. I've already spoke to her. W watch this God. Watch God now, y'all. Watch God. Watch God. This is, this is Mother's Day. Now watch this power of this sea. Watch this mother. God spoke to her before God told him where to go. I definitely believe that there are some people that God speaks to before God ever gives me the next move to move to, to an area. And that's how you can sometimes tell when people have just been listening to other things and not listening to God because they're going to conflict you. They're going to fight you. And where God sends you, there's going to be no fight. Well, there's a sign of a fight that is not God. Satan got involved somewhere and someone's trying to block it because when God gives it to you, he's going to just lay it out for you because you're walking in obedience. You ain't got to go fight somebody and tolerate somebody and put up with negative attitudes and put up with it. If that person's from God, it is not going to do that when it comes to the kingdom of God. They, they will just understand because God's going to lay it out just like that. And that's what God did. He laid it out there and Elijah did as God commanded. And the Bible says when he got to Zarephath, he met this widow, widow, widow at the gate of the city. Here's the story. And he said to her, he said to this woman, and he said, the Bible said, he said, he, 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 said, he said, he said, he said, fetch me, I pray thee. The King James, New King James Version. He said, fetch me, I, I pray thee, a, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And the Bible says she did what he said. And then he said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. Now remember, this man was... In the wilderness, God fed him through a brook and a bird. But he spoke to a woman in another city. And he told Elijah, just go there now because there's some more work to do. And he told her, Elijah said, give me some water, please. And then give me some bread. Now, I could preach two more days on, on this woman in this 2020. Uh, wait a minute now. Ain't no ring on my finger. What, what do you mean, give you some bread? What? You know, so. <laughs> but here she is now in the process of God getting ready to use her. And so she said, as the Lord hath given, God liveth, I, I have not a cake, but I got a, I had just a handful of meal in a barrel and got a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I, I gathered two sticks that I may go and dress it for me and my son that we may die. Sir, I don't have but a little bit of bread and I mean some oil and some and some meal. I, I don't I don't have any I don't have bread or, or water enough for you. I just got enough for me and my boy to eat. We're gonna eat this and we're gonna die. Some people don't believe they have anything to give to God. I wanna talk to you for a minute. The truth is if you live on this earth, you have something to give. God will always provide a seed for the person who's willing to plant it. I promise you, he promises you, you'll have a job. You'll always have a job if you're willing to plant. And you may not always have your own place, your own something to drive, your own something to work. Because you can blow yours. You blow yours. But you'll always be the person with a job. Because you're always willing to tithe and give. But you may not be a person with all your needs met over here because you keep blowing your part. But you're going to always have, you'll be the person always, you, you always working, but you never have nothing to show for it. I'll let that sink in. You may be one of these people and you may not have anything more than a few sticks, a handful of meal, and a little jar of oil. But with God, that's enough. So Elijah told the woman, first of all, don't worry about it, ma'am. Stop. Don't fear. And that's a very important statement, church. Don't, don't, first of all, you, I want you to get rid of the thought that you're going to die because you're doing what God has said do. If, 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 if fear rises up in you at the thought of giving, whatever little bit you have, speak to that fear in the name of Jesus. 
God, I, I know you want, I want to give $200 today. I want to give what I've never given before. Fear's going to say, you can't do that. You're going to be without a car next week. You're not going to be able to pay your light bill. Speak to that fear in the name of Jesus. Speak to that fear in the name of Jesus. Speak to that fear in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about the power of a seed. I can guarantee you that there are some of you listening to me right now. The doctor said that you were not going to have a baby. You couldn't conceive. The baby was going to be born with all kinds of disorders. The baby was going to be, and you had to, in Jesus' name, if you didn't, your grandmother, your mother, and if they didn't, somebody in the church spoke in tongues, and you have no idea of being filled with the Spirit, that they reversed that. You've got to revert. You're going to always hear the scary tactics of the enemy because he speaks the way you like to hear. You're going to see it on social media. You're going to read it on Facebook. You're going to read it on Instagram. You're going to read it on the news. You're going to hear it on CNN. You're going to read it in the newspaper. That's how Satan communicates with us, and that's where the fear comes from. God is saying, though, I'm going to speak to your spirit, and it's not going to sound like your flesh. Speak to it in the name of Jesus. I've had all kinds of people to come to me this week. Pastor, and I'm willing to stand out here now because I've been here before. And when I was reading about Elijah and talking about this seed, when my mom gave birth to me, she never heard me speak. She never heard me do anything. My mother never saw me really on but one program. And... Uh, she never knew what she birthed. I didn't make her proud before she died. But she loved me without me making her proud. She was proud to have me. I was too stupid, immature, young, and ignorant to appreciate what love looked like that didn't have anything to show for it but its consistency with who I was trying to be. So here I go. Somebody asked me this week, so what do you think about all the injustices that are being done? Well, first of all, the injustices have always been done. What do you mean? A brother offered a very powerful, wonderful question. He said, with some mother being able to just walk out of jail, out of being guaranteed to be for seven days, watch this now, and don't you, don't, and don't you rebuke me, and if you do, it's okay. God's got my back. I'm not here to defend any wrong. Wrong was done. But here was the question. What kind of power can just let somebody out of jail like that? I shook my head. I said, and I know, I, I, I know, I know what it's like to be the preacher and everybody throws daggers at you because you sound stupid. I know what it means. It sounds like to be at Noah telling people it's going to rain and they don't even know what water it looks like. I know that now. What kind of power could do that? That's called the power of God. What? That's Republican. That's white folk. That's crazy. What if that mother is a believer? B before we say anything else, what if that mother is a believer? <clears throat> forget Republican, forget Democrat, forget white, forget racist. Forget all the other stuff. What if that mother is a believer? And if you don't believe God has the power to free you when your sentence has been passed down, don't ever sing another lie about him being a lawyer in a courtroom if you're a believer. And, and you take the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who said, we will not bow, but we will serve God. And they were put in the jail burning. And God visited them in jail and released them. And then you kill the story of Daniel who said, no, 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 no. I believe. I believe that God is real and I believe my God is real. And they locked Daniel up. And he prayed. And God freed him. And then Peter and then Saul, and then Paul, all in jail, and God, because they believed. 
You want to know what the opinion is? You want to know what the word of God is saying to us? Let somebody else paint the story. But there's a believer in here this morning that ought to believe. Wait a minute. Even if this person is not a believer, if a person that's not a believer can stand firm and God can open some doors, he's still opening doors. We can't get involved with the pettiness. Forget what you see on the news. Remember what the word of God said. God will provide. If that lady is a believer, and I can just imagine all the hate mail that will come my way. I'm okay. And I understand what, what this lady did. I want to say this too. That was wrong. That was defiant. That's the very thing that we teach our young people. We're trying to teach young America. Stop just trying to be defiant. I don't have to go to work on time. I don't have to show up. I'm free. You give me a job. I get off when I want to. I can do what I need. Can't say no and can't handle no. We want yes, but we can't handle no. Wrong, 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 wrong. But how many of us as believers have been wrong? And when we get shut down, we pray to this God that grandmother talked about. You get scared and you say, oh Lord, I didn't know it was going to go this far. And God says, I'll make a way out of no way. Now I'm talking to a believer now. I'm talking to a believer. I'm not talking to a critic. I'm not talking to somebody that said, Ricky Rush has lost his mind. He's leaving those people. Well then, if you think I've lost my mind, why don't you try it? Why don't you try it when the next time the devil tells you no and shuts the door, why don't you believe and see if God will open the door for you? I have spoken and it is done. I cannot teach a ministry that holds up hatred. I cannot can I teach about a God who does not forgive? I've had people who said they love me. Oh, they love me. They rally. Two days later, junk, mess, lies, rumors. Those same people shut you into a condemned cell. And they talk to everyone but you. But with those doors closed in my face, just like with yours, I believed let your faith overcome your fear. Let your faith overcome your fear about giving. People tell you all the time it doesn't make sense to just give. You need that money. God says you need more than that money. You need more than that money. You need peace of mind. You need joy. You need peace. You need long suffering. You need forgiveness. You need everlasting life. You need a way out of no way. You need dark, light in the midst of darkness. You need joy to come in the morning. See, you need a whole lot more than money. Now, maybe in the world that stuff was about money. I'm not involved with that. But I don't want any believers to walk away thinking because doors have been slammed in your face that we don't have a God that will open some doors also. What kind of power would do that? That's called the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, speaking for a non-believer, and I'm not going to say who's a believer or non-believer. That's my question. I just wanted to know. And if not, this is what digital ministry is all about. This is what being a digital evangelist is all about. I may never see these people, but if this word can get out there and say, you do know now, whoever you are, God spared you. You do know that the Lord made a way out of no way. And then somebody might say, tell us about this God. Okay, that's your platform right there, saints. Don't miss it. Preachers, we can't hop behind every bandwagon that justifies people doing us wrong. We came out of wrong. But there's been power in the seed. Elijah said, go and do what I said. And when the woman did what he said, she's had oil, meal, the Bible said that she had enough to make a bunch of cakes. But the only reason it came, guys, is after she fixed all of it, Elijah said to this woman, now, now that you fixed the cake and the water, I'm about to finish this. Now that you finished with all that, he said, I want you to give me the first cake. But he didn't ask her to give it without telling her that God's promise 
about the harvest. Now, now when you go over here, you, you fix all this, you get that meal and that water you have, and I want you to give me the first fruit, the first cake. Get it? You give the first, you give me the first one. And then God's going to provide all this other. Oh. Yeah, that lady. I don't know who she is. I don't know what this stuff's all about. I'm a pastor. I'm not a politician. I trust the politicians to do what they do. Our city leaders and all the people. I just did decide another thing, too. I'm no longer going to vote. I'm not going to vote anymore. I, I voted before. I'm going to stop just voting. I've got a campaign. There's a difference. See, I can go vote or I can take people with me. I had a campaign. God told me, you stop just voting. You, camp you campaign. We don't just go vote. Get some other people to come so we can put right people in offices. And I said, yes, sir, I will, because I've never done that. I've never done that. And I don't care if you're scoring me. I've been scoring before. Thank you, God, for letting me be scoring. So now scoring, it hurts, but it can't stop me like it used to. But that same lady went into another salon on another side of the city and gave them some money first. Now, everybody say that's a publicity stunt. It's a political stunt. Okay, let's just say everything's even. But when you work a biblical principle, I don't care if you, somebody's grandma spoke in tongue. Maybe one of them boys at the other barber shop. Maybe somebody's grandma. See, you understand, you're looking at the wrong thing. You're looking at the, at the woman coming over here. I'm looking at the person in the barber shop who just got a, a need met because their grandmother talked to God. She sowed a seed. Y'all don't get it. Somebody, grandma in Oak Cliff, somebody, grandma in West Dallas, sold a seed, and her baby sitting up in the shop the other day, and, a, and a, I'm going to just use this word, don't, don't, don't use this, and a white woman comes in and says, I'm going to give you just $200. She gave him $200 just being in the barber shop. This wasn't about that woman. It was about that grandma's seed being fulfilled. Y'all don't, don't miss the, it's too big to miss, y'all. It's too big to miss. Satan will have you looking at the hate part, and you miss the giving part. Somebody going to come from cross town and go to sign dollars, give you $250. You let a white, you let a black boy walk in anywhere in North Dallas with a mask on right now. You just let him walk in there. Not to give him money, just let him walk in there and see what happens. You be talking about CNN and, and, and all them ends and that. And the lady walked into the bar shop with a mask on. You know, just, just don't miss God in it. Ricky Rush is sold out. No, Ricky Rush has been sold out. I'm sold out to the way of Christ. This ministry is about God's redeeming love. He's trying, to, he's trying to send a very obvious message, but we can get so wrapped up in the hate part, we miss the healing part. That was wrong. That lady was wrong. Her tactics were wrong. Her, her mannerisms were wrong. And when I meet her, I'm going to embrace her and say, man, you were wrong. But God want me to tell you, That he wants you to believe in him because he opened that door. Don't you give no official no credit for opening no door for you. God did that to show us that he can speak still when the doors are closed. Open doors that have been closed in our face. That was a message for us. And that meal in the Bible, it never stopped coming. The woman ate from then on. So what am I trying to tell you real quick? What did we learn from the lesson today? What did we learn from the lesson? I have one more slide. I want to. If you have very little to give, you need to be giving God something for the Lord to multiply. He wants to do some multiplying in your life too. Okay. And you know you, and you know me. I ain't getting locked up for no two days for no five hundred thousand dollars. But if that's all, if that's if that's what it takes to sow a seed, don't miss it. We've been locked up for how many days in this COVID-19? How many days? We're on 29 episodes. We've been locked up longer than seven days. Listen, saints. And look at us. All of us have more than we've ever had before. Don't miss God in the picture. 
Now, okay, and, and I'm going to beg you, I'm going to beg don't change churches because your pastor seeks righteousness. And, but he said, the Bible said, the, the, the wealth of the righteous is laid up in the hands of the sinners. And, and I'm not calling the woman a sinner. I'm not calling anybody a sinner. But that's what the Bible says. So who's going to get the money to bring to us? The Egyptians had the wealth. But God's children needed the freedom. All I ask God about is the next time you hear my name bad in a barber shop, a beauty shop, or some other shop, just stand on God's word. That's all. What did we learn from this lesson today? What did we learn this Mother's Day? What did we learn? When we give to God first, he makes things last. Mm, 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 mm. That's what we learned this morning. What else did we learn? That wilderness giving gets you out of wilderness living. That dry place turned into food that never ran out. What did we learn? God knows your fate, but he's moved by your faith. I don't know who you are, and I don't know what you do, and I don't know if you're one of those people that'll say, girl, you got to tune in to this service today. Because man of God just says something today that bless your heart. Now, now I don't understand a whole lot of what Ricky Rush said, but I think I need to go back and listen to that message because it sounds like God is speaking to us. Satan's trying to hide a different code. God is showing us something. God is showing us that harvest after harvest comes from giving after giving. <laughs> Keep watering. It's going to keep growing. And you're going to keep getting haters. Happy Mother's Day, mamas. There's power in your seed. Your babies are still giving. Your babies are still uh, producing. God's still opening doors. I'm going to now do something that we do. And I'm going to bless our offering. Our doors are open. Our drive through church is open. Boy, I, I'm okay to say that. I sure miss our church. Man, I'm, I miss having people in the building. I do. I, I think I can say that today. I can say that today. I, be transparent, human, all of that stuff. I'm okay. I miss it. I'm, I'm going to say something real crazy. I even miss the people that frown in church. You know, every once in a while I just see folk frown, and at least you know they're here. I, I, I miss a good, I don't have, we don't have too many folk do that, but you know, you, every church got some sleepers. They just, this is a comfortable place to go sleep. But I'm grateful for them. Never thought we'd appreciate people who just can't ever seem to muster up a smile. I look forward to God opening some more doors now. Y'all, let's not miss the big picture. Let's not miss the big picture here. This thing is too big to miss. We're still fighting. This is not a flesh and blood fight. It's not black and white anymore, y'all. It, it, that's, that's, the, that's the sidetrack thing. We, st we still got principalities out here. We're still in spiritual warfare. <laughs> you know, don't you wish you could go and bust Corona in the face? <clears throat> don't you wish you could handcuff Corona? Don't you wish you could put Corona in jail? Don't you wish that? Let's stay focused. Let's stay focused. I need your prayers. <clears throat> I don't know of a believer <clears throat> that God's ever used that doesn't have flaws. And I'm so, I'm so grateful to God for the flaws in my life because they keep me humble enough to realize I don't have a right to point at anybody and condemn anyone. My flaws are not the flaws that you may think. Ask me about them, I'll tell you. And you might be one of them. But let me say this. I will never allow Satan to put me in a trap anymore where I won't give to God. And I said to God the other day, God, there's something that's not right about a whole lot of things. And God said, well, you have to make it right, Ricky. First of all, you need to stand before my people and tell them the truth and tell them about the power of the seed. And if people see things that are injustice, stop voting. Just stop the voting. Start the campaigning. Get behind some people 
and make sure that their motives are right. That's all Elijah did. That's all Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. That's all Daniel did. That's all Jesus did. Jesus was just a campaign manager for God. He just walked around, you know. He that believeth in the Father shall have everlasting life. He just campaigned for God. He just kept campaigning. And that's all I'm doing, y'all. I'm just campaigning for God now. So I can say I gave my life to Jesus, but are you going to campaign for God now? If you gave your life to the Lord, are you going to campaign for faith? Are you going to hold up your banners high and go, I'm going to campaign for God? I'm going to be a digital evangelist. I can't go door to door, but I can go thumb to thumb. No more excuses. <laughs> I'll be your campaign manager. You don't have to call me pastor. I'll just help you get to that level if I can. Thank you, Thanks for watching and for being bold and unashamed. Looking for even more content from Ibach and Pastor Ricky G. Rush? Make sure you're following Ibach and Pastor Rush on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For even more info right at your fingertips, the new mobile app is available for iOS and Android in the iTunes and Google Play stores. And don't forget that an important part of accomplishing God's mission are the tithes and offerings we receive from faithful viewers just like you. Won't you make a difference and become a fisher of men, supporting the ministry work of IBOC and helping us change thousands of lives all over the world? Visit us online at ibachchurch.org or on our mobile app to make your donation. You can also give through Givelify in just a few short steps. Thanks for your support. That's it for now, but be sure to tune in next week for another powerful message from the Master Illustrator, Pastor Ricky G. Rush.